Aleman at opisyal, hindi rin ligtas sa hacking ang government agencies. Ayon sa mga eksperto, maituturing na biggest cybersecurity threat ang Comelink. Marso 2016 nang nangyari ang Comelink. Nasira ang website ng Komisyon ng Elections at ilang impormasyon ng mga botante ang kumalat online. Pagka binigay mo yung date of birth mo, or online, yung other credentials mo, like yung address mo, where you live, where you go to school, ano ang present occupation mo. Kasi yan, kung meron talagang mga scammers who would uh, capitalize on this, search ka online at mabubuo nila yung buong identity mo using all those information that you have shared over so many platforms. Pwede mong assemblein yun. Nito lamang Abril 2019, nahack ang database ng Armed Forces of the Philippines na naglalaman ng impormasyon ng 20,000 military personnel, kabilang na ang kanilang injuries at basic information. Nito lamang Pebrero, sinubukan ng isang digital lifestyle blog ang iba't ibang government websites para suriin kung alin ang secure laban sa hacking. 29 out of 46 government websites ang hindi secured from hacking. Dalawa rito, hindi fully secured at 15 lamang ang fully secured. Binalikan namin ang mga website na ito para tingnan kung may pagbabago sa kanilang security levels. As of October 2019, tatlo pa lamang out of 29 government websites ang secured. Ayon sa datos ng Federal Bureau of Investigation taong 2018, pang sampuang Pilipinas sa most cyber attack countries worldwide. Ayon sa Global Security Index Report taong 2018, ang Pilipinas ay 37 out of 193 countries patungkol sa cyber security preparedness. Dapat bumalik tayo doon sa mga warranty cards na pag may binibili tayo noon, ang daming terms and conditions, maliliit na bagay. Offline nga, hindi mo binabasa yung maliliit na nakasulat doon. Much more pagka online, di ba? Although hindi mo binasa yan, pero pag kami specific item doon na sinasabi, do you want to share your contact, huwag mo nang i-click. Kasi otherwise, ma-access talaga nila mga contacts mo. So people with credit cards, Maybe you might have closed your credit card or left it dormant. Pero dahil na-leak yung credentials mo, biglang magkakaroon ka na naman ng transactions. Ayun. Ayun. And then papasukon ka. And then, ang nangyayari dito, pwede mo naman i-dispute eh. You can always tell the bank, well, hindi ko ginagamit yung card na yan. Biglang nagkaroon ng, ano, ng transaction. How many of our government agencies have secure websites? Well, as far as I know, at least uh, less than 50% are secured at the moment. Last time I checked. Uh, and I think kasama din yan sa I think cyber, they call it a cyber posture or cyber culture when uh -huh. we implement mga websites. Yeah, but I was given a list here and even the office of the president's website is not secure. The office of the vice president's website, the Supreme Court, Congress is not secure. Well, nagsimula din yan na uh, nung, nung nag-migrate to the internet. Uh -oh. uh, hindi naman din, you know, aware din yung mga tao na, okay, number one, may mga risks. Number two, like itong securing a website. Dati, may, may bayad yan. So obviously, there's a cost to secure it. Iwiway mo ngayon yung cost and benefit of actually securing your website. And dati, traditionally, uh, and IT people know this, you would only secure a website pag mayroong personal info na sinasubmit through the website. For example, banking or uh -oh. cards and all that. Pero ngayon, what we've learned is kahit na hindi ka nagsasubmit ng personal information to the website, may benefit pa rin to securing it. Bakit? Napiprevent niya itong mga hackers from altering the website. Oh, and, okay. you know, so, importante siya na, ano, na right now, there's no excuse na hindi isecure ang website. Pero, syempre, may legacy tayo na... So, what can be done about it? Buong buhay natin is a data point. So, yung privacy, that's about your data point. Kailangan mo i-secure mo yan eh, bago mo you know, ilabas yan sa internet, bago mo ibigay yan sa mga companies. At the same time, information, let's say news, is another data point na ikaw naman na nagko-consume. Iingatan mo rin na yung kinoconsume mong data, tama. Baka mamaya ang kinoconsume mo, misinformation, disinformation pala. Also, uh, yung attitude natin tungkol sa data, kailangan mag-iba na. Bakit mayroon attitude ba ang Pilipino tungkol sa data? Hindi natin iniisip, sa totoo lang. Hindi talaga natin iniisip. Ah, ganun. Hindi siya second nature sa atin. Uh, meron na nga akong kinukoy na phrase eh. You know, data rights are human rights. Kasi tao naman ang pinanggagalingan ng data.